Welcome everyone. I know it's been a little while, but it's good to be back. I'm working on a Dean Explosion this time. It's a Dean Razorback designed by Dimebag Daryl. This particular neck through body I got off a guy on Craigslist. He was selling it for $120. I was able to get it for $60 because I pointed out, you know, it was missing all the plastics and the chips and everything. This body had absolutely nothing with it except the body. These are pretty high value metal guitars, so I figured I could buy it and then put everything in it that needed to be put in. So I ordered the parts and the first thing that came in the mail was the bridge. Now this bridge is a Floyd Rose Special, which is what these guitars came with. I tried my best, uh, as, as best I could to match what the guitar came with. This is a pretty nice bridge. It's got a good weight to it and actual, uh, actually on the block as well as the, the plate here, it has the Floyd Rose stamp. So the first thing I'm putting in is the claw, which pretty easy to do. And of course the strap buttons. I think anybody who's played guitar for more than a year has probably had to reinstall a strap button that's popped out on them. not difficult whatsoever and you guys remember that court m600t nice purple guitar I had that we switched the pickups out well I kept those EMG HZs and that's what we're gonna put in the Dean so you see I've got them not installed yet but put in place first thing we're gonna do is uh, put this bridge on which we just have to put the post in place and then set the bridge where it goes and then I like to put a couple springs in the back to hold it in place. See, it just pivots on the little knife edge of these two posts. Pretty simple. There you can see the little bridge block with the stamp on it. Starting to look like a guitar already. See the truss cover is missing. Uh, that's something we're gonna have to make ourselves because cheapest ones I could find that were a direct fit for this guitar are like 30 bucks, which is too much. But we're putting on the locking nut. You can see that's just two screws. That's the other reason it was important to me to get the proper bridge for this guitar is because I wanted to make sure that the locking nut fit properly. And a quick test fit of the locks. So this is just a pretty standard little input jack plate, output jack plate, just test fitting, I'm trying to keep all the hardware together on the guitar so I don't lose it. The next thing that came in the mail were my pots. These are 500K and some orange drop capacitors. But of course, these pots are actually a little bit bigger than what the guitar came with from the factory. So I had to bust out the reamer and make the holes a little larger. Now a reamer's got a pretty steep cur a pretty steep slant, so I like to do it from the top and then go around, hit it from the bottom, and then it'll give me a more even hole. And then just test fitting the pot nice and snug. Once all three of the pots are in place, uh, two volumes, one tone, I got some speed knobs which match the originals that went with this guitar as well. And those are just press on knobs. You can see that's what we got going so far. But the switch is missing. There's always something holding you up. Two days later, the switch has arrived. Just your standard kind of Gibson style three-way. Sounds like a name of a 70s movie that our parents wouldn't want us to see. Alright, so the first thing I'm doing for the electronics wire up is to tin my lugs. Which just means to deposit solder on them. And I like to go ahead and install the cap on my tone pot. So that way it's a visual reference. Just a quick look, I know which one's the tone immediately. Now, if you see where the switch is on this guitar, you see the, the extreme distance that the hookup wire has to travel 
to get down to the electronics cavity. You have to go up into the neck pickup and all the way through. So I thought it'd be a good idea to shield this wire. And what we'll do is we'll wrap the copper tape around the wire and then solder one of the ends of the uh, copper wire or copper tape to the shielding inside the cavity. Which these guitars have shielding paint. It's kind of interesting how you have to do it. You have to put the wire through this direction to get it down to the switch and then follow the neck pickup wire to get it down to the control cavity. Just like that. And it fits underneath the pickup. All right, so there's the output from the switch I'm hooking up. You can see the blue wire is our neck pickup. The green wire is going to be our bridge pickup. And on the other side of the switch is the ground. Hi right, guys, live action Richard here. I want to talk about some pickup color coding real quick. On the EMG HZs, you have your north start, which is your red hot. It's your hot lead. And you have your north finish and south start. And then you have your south finish and your ground. Okay. So that's your standard five lead humbucker. Now these just get wired together, the black and white, so that you can use them to coil tap if you want, but this isn't being coil tapped, so these are just going to be soldered together and taped. So this is gonna be my quote unquote negative, and the ground is gonna get wired to that, okay? So that eliminates more confusion, so you're down to just three leads, basically, once you wire these together. So this is going to be our hot, this is going to be our ground, this is just going to be taped, so in theory, you're down to really two leads. So it's more simple than you think. Now of course, go online, find out what pickups you have, consult their website, or any diagram you can find about your pickup to see what you have going on. So this is a very common, common color code setup. So I hope that takes some confusion out of it for you guys. Alright, let's get back to work. Thank you, Live Action Richard. First thing we're doing after all that is to set up our ground system. And I like to do kind of a star pattern off of the bridge pickup. And all we're doing is grounding all the pots together and then grounding that to the shielding. And then, of course, to the output lug of the uh, output jack. Now, you see I've hooked up my switch output to the middle lug on the tone and then that green wire you just saw me hook up to the center lug of my bridge volume and now the blue wire is hooked up to the center lug of the neck volume now it's time to hook up the actual pickups so this is the bridge pickup to the uh, only remaining lug of the bridge volume I hook that and then the ground goes in place on the back of the bridge pot and then you just repeat the process for the neck pickup. Here we're just going ahead and you saw I shielded the wire for the output jack. Went ahead and installed that. It's pretty simple. And I had to leave the pickup wires long in case someone wants to put in new pickups when they get this guitar. So there's a drill bit. For some reason I didn't fill, film me drilling the new holes for the new tuners which pretty much matched the old tuners, but the actual uh, screw retainer was in a different place. So sorry about that, but anyway, put those in, and then we screw the sleeves down. They go over the little cap stands for the tuners. And then it's time for strings. Now, I didn't clean the guitar or anything yet. Uh, this was all uh, just kind of making sure everything fit right. I'm going to test it and play with the intonation, make sure everything is perfect. Once it is, then I'll take it back apart and clean everything up and get it ready for sale. And of course, Lucina the Kitty, you guys remember her. She uh, is still with us and still attacking all my strings all the time. But yeah, that's basically going to do it for this video. The next video, we're going to make the plastics and we're going to do a sound test and all that. I did test the guitar. It works. It sounds good. And uh, 
in the next video we're going to do a little bit more to the headstock and then we'll do a nice recording with this axe before i sell it and you'll see all that in the next one but i appreciate you guys watching and stick around for that again we're going to make all the plastics you've seen me do that before but if you haven't there's videos about it on my channel but i appreciate you guys sticking with me and uh, i know it's a little bit long between videos but such is life i appreciate it everyone and uh yeah i will see you in the next one thanks bye